Uh, there's a reason why we're looking over that skyline because Ben has that outlook this morning. Looking ahead, Ben, to a couple of busy days for football and uh, the money that comes alongside it. Yeah, good morning to you both. Uh, Matt will kill you for that, by the way. But yeah, good morning. Welcome to our gorgeous viewpoint here in uh, central London. We're looking back at that skyline. Uh, but over the next couple of days, very few people will be looking at that. And instead, they're going to be looking at that, at the big screen here in the bar on a rooftop with that glorious vista. And of course, Euros and we're talking about the business implications of that success at the Euros for the home nations means a big boost to the economy. Um, so let me run you through the numbers because some of them are pretty stark. Now we're expected that any success will bring a boost of about 150 million pounds to the UK economy uh, and it might not sound like a lot in the big scheme of things but remember if we're all feeling a bit excited a bit optimistic we tend to put our hands in our pockets a little deeper and spend a little bit more. Uh, just on beer sales alone, 19 million pints of beer are expected to be sold on Saturday for England's game. Uh, now, we should say if social distancing rules and some of those restrictions were not in place, had they been lifted when we originally thought they were going to be, that number would be much higher, another 5 million or so pints. So quite a significant difference. But nonetheless, for hospitality firms, they're just glad to be back open and have people through the doors. But it's not just hospitality, you know, the bars and the restaurants. It's also retail. We spend more for big events like this, believe it or not. Buying big TVs, uh, all of the merchandise that goes with things like this. So uh, sales of that expected to be pretty sharply up. Three and a half billion pounds sold, uh, uh, bought in the shops as a result of the tournament. And also supermarkets do well. Aside from the beer sales, pizza sales expected to jump uh, 200 rise in pizza sales, including 10 million pizzas that will be consumed during the tournaments. Uh, so spare a thought from the people that are making all of those pizzas. We caught up with some of them in Manchester yesterday. What you see as a result of the Euros, because it's bringing the country together so massively and obviously restrictions easing, people can spend time with each other, you're allowed to go and sit in someone's garden with um, a, lot, a lot of people as opposed to one person on a park bench. So you see people taking advantage of the fact that they can do that, which is great. So your deliveries and your takeaways increase significantly. But with the, with the football on Tuesday, if we were to compare that to, say, the Tuesdays over June, uh, as opposed to the Tuesday just gone, you'd have to say it'd be an extra, an extra 20 to 25% sales-wise. We'd prep more in advance. We'd make sure we're covered for staff. Um, people might have to pick up a few more hours. We might have to order some more products to have a full restaurant on a Saturday night and knowing that in the next two, three weeks it could be all basically back to normal. It's just, it's just great. And I think when you coincide that with sporting events, especially like the football, you just see everybody coming together. It's also based on every time England play, I'm confident they're going to win, even when they get knocked out at the group stage. Um, and also I've taken next week off, so they need to win, otherwise I've wasted my holiday. So, yeah, lots of pizzas consumed, all of that sort of merchandise that we've got down with us this morning. Let me introduce you, though, to Harry, who is with us this morning. He's a venue manager here. Harry, morning. morning. Thanks for letting us in so bright and early. A big weekend ahead for you. Um, look, how important are the Euros for places like this? Fantastic. And I mean, with all the, the stuff that's going on with COVID at the moment, I mean, it's fantastic to get people back yeah. out into hospitality, getting people excited about drinking again, yeah. eating again on the roof. It's fantastic, yeah. Talk to me about the sort of, you know, there is a fly in the ointment, isn't it? Because you can't have big groups, which you would like to have. Uh, so that sort of limits capacity and things like that. But you're very lucky. You've got a big outdoor venue with a big screen and a glorious view. It sort of works in your favour. Absolutely. A blessing and a curse being on the roof. I mean, obviously, we fall victim to the weather when it's yes. not great. Um, <laughs> but we can have groups of 30 out here. We've opened a couple of other bars indoors for smaller groups as well. Um, so, yeah, we're making the most of it, definitely. And how important is, you know, this tournament, given the year that you've had? Because we know hospitality, one of the worst affected industries by all of those restrictions. You know, you're really counting on a bit of success to make a little bit of money back, aren't you? Absolutely, yeah, we've hit the ground running. <laughs> yeah, we've been able to uh, expand the team. We've got almost 100 people hired here now yeah. uh, on the roster. So it's great to have, you know, a lot of people working, friendly faces, um, socially distanced up here and you know, keeping our guests safe 
and yeah. still providing a great service for them. And what are your guests telling you about being back? Um, you know, they must be thrilled to be able to be back out in a bar for a big event and, you know, for you to be able to welcome them in. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a bit cagey at first, but I think, <laughs> you know, with social distance me measures and uh, the way that we do things here and yeah. the way that we've tailored our operation, people are really, really comfortable and enjoying themselves and coming back. So it's great. Good luck. I know you've got a load of work ahead for the next few days and fingers crossed. Uh, Harry, thank you. Really nice thank to you see very much. you. Uh, that's Harry there, the venue manager here. Um, a little later, we're going to take you through all of this sort of stuff. A uh, big economic boost as a result. Uh, but uh, yeah, nonetheless, fingers crossed for the games over the next couple of days. Ben, thanks very much. We'll see you later on. Now, with the rapid growth of renewable energy and electric vehicles in recent years, it's no surprise the demand for the metals they rely on is soaring. But could the answer lie deep underground in Cornwall? Our science correspondent, Rebecca Morell, has a look. Heading underground into Cornwall's South Crofty mine. Well, we're about 120 metres below surface right now, and we're actually beneath the surrounding water table. What you can see here is basically the sheet of mineralisation that was mined. Work stopped decades ago, but these caverns could soon open up again. Minerals in Cornwall have been mined for hundreds of years, but with the green economy, metals like lithium and here tin are now soaring in demand. And the hope is that this mine could play a crucial part in the UK supply. Anything with an electric connection, a circuit board, whatever, has tin in it. So all of these objectives and uses that we are using to get to this carbon neutral economy require tin to some degree. And to have that domestic supply on your doorstep, it makes sense to see this mine into production. Above ground too, new methods of mineral extraction are being trialled. Lithium, essential for batteries, is abundant in the southwest. This borehole reaches about a kilometre beneath my feet where there are lithium rich rocks. And as the water down there washes over them, the mineral seeps out into the brine. That's brought back up and I've got some of the liquid here. And it's from this that the lithium is extracted. The project is currently at the pilot stage. The aim is to have it entirely powered by renewable energy to make the process carbon neutral. Right now, lithium comes from Australia and South America, but the company thinks it could eventually supply around a third of the UK's future lithium needs. A typical mobile phone battery has about two or three grams of lithium in it, whereas an electric vehicle battery can have up to about 50 kilos. So it really is this huge step change in lithium demand. And that's why there's the need to look for it in places that we haven't looked for it before. Two pieces of rock here that are both lithium ore. The World Bank estimates we will need a 500% increase in the global production of lithium by 2050. We should work towards a circular economy where we just recycle the metals we use. But at this moment in time, we can't do that. It's just the growth is too fast, it's too rapid. And to hit the target of net zero, we need those technologies now. So I think it's inevitable we will continue mining. But mining in the future will have to be different to minimise and repair any environmental damage. Experts say a green revolution is pointless unless the planet is protected in the process. Rebecca Morell, BBC News. Fascinating stuff, that, especially after the announcement of the big battery production factory in yes. Sunderland. Look ahead to tomorrow night, Saturday night. One of the big questions ahead of England's match tomorrow is where will you watch, what will you be buying? Ben, that's what you're addressing this morning. It is potentially a big boost, isn't it, for places like the one you're in this morning? Yeah, it could be a huge economic boost. Good morning to you both. Take a look at the glorious view that we've got here on our rooftop position in East London. But all eyes will not be on that glorious view. Instead, they'll be on that, on the big screen, uh, where they'll be showing the football. And for bars and restaurants that have had a pretty tough year, the Euros has been big business. They're doing pretty well out of it. Let me run you through the numbers because it tells us quite how much they're set to benefit. A uh, £150 million boost to the economy from this tournament. Now, in the big scheme of things, it is not a lot. But nonetheless, as I said, after a tough year, it is very welcome to get customers back in. Uh, 19 million pints of beer are going to be consumed on Saturday. And again, a great number, but it would be even higher, 24 million, if the restrictions were still uh, were, had been removed. We're not 
still in place. And it means that big groups can't gather, so the amount of money that bars and restaurants can make does fall somewhat. Uh, and about three and a half billion pounds will be spent in actual shops and all sorts of kit, whether that's merchandise or a new telly to watch it on, or maybe food and drink if you're going to watch it at home rather than, be, than being in somewhere like this. And so, as I said, after a really difficult year for so many bars and restaurants, this is a very welcome boost, but by no means is it business as usual. Let me introduce you to Kate Nichols, Chief Executive of UK Hospitality. Kate, morning. Mm -hmm. As I said, look, great to get people back, great to have a big event that people can gather around, but the restrictions mean it's not business as usual. Absolutely. I mean, it's really encouraging to see people back. It's the closest thing you can get to enjoying the atmosphere of a match is coming to a pub or a bar. And while we're seeing a good sales uplift and strong demand, bars like this are fully booked, but they're fully booked at half capacity. So it's nowhere near the significant lift in sales that we would see from a normal match, particularly when the home nations progress in the tournament. So yes, we're seeing sales uplifts of about 60%. You'd normally get two to 300% on a match day. And we've talked a lot over this past 18 months about the difficulties that the hospitality industry is facing and people are still reluctant to go out aren't they they're not back in the numbers that the industry needs no footfall is still down it's not recovered to 2019 levels even on those match days we're still seeing footfall and capacity 20 30 percent down on 2019 levels so we've got a long road to recovery and until we get all of those restrictions lifted we're not going to get back to full strength OK, for now, thanks so much. Lovely to see you. Uh, but come with me. Look, I mean, as we said, it's bars and restaurants that may do quite well out of all of this. But there are shops that are doing pretty well as well. Uh, Claire is with me, retail expert and a familiar face. Um, Claire, look, all the merchandise is here. This stuff flying off the shelves the further that England progress. It's good news for retail, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. And the feel-good factor isn't just on this kind of merchandise, yep. the England branding. It goes beyond that. People are going out and about, so they're going to the other shops. There's an uplift in things like barbecue products and drinks as people celebrate in their gardens. And even things like TVs, fridges, projector screens and projectors so that they can get together and socialise after a time when they haven't been able to do so. And there's a feel-good factor as well, isn't there? Because, yeah. you know, even if it's not all of this stuff, if it's not fridges and tellies, <laughs> we're more likely to put our hand in our pocket if we're feeling excited or good yeah. about things. Yes, it boosts some human confidence and it boosts footfall because people are out and about more and that obviously has a positive knock-on effect to all the high street businesses, not just the ones that are linked to the sports. Claire, nice to see you as always. Nice Thanks so, yeah. very much. Um, so there you have it. I mean, look, business really excited, uh, as we all are, of course, before the Games this weekend. The further England progress, of course, the longer that economic boost goes on. Uh, but in the meantime, bars, restaurants and shops really trying to cash in after what's been a really tough year. Back to you. Ben's got the look of an England goalkeeper, I would say. Uh, the way he's, he's got the reach. Yeah, That's hasn't he? Sure. Look at that.